and get ready to start our workshop meeting. Bringing you in on, on conference. Hi, Kev. Hey, Kev. Kev, you yeah. miss a, you're missing a packed house here. Both of us in the hallway. Uh, I still have two minutes. Now we have two minutes. We're going to wait. Right. Begin the meeting. I, I can only barely hear you. Just got to talk a little louder. Talk louder. We can hear you. Yes, we can hear you fine. I'll try and speak a little louder. Those are the microphones. Those are the mics. Speakers in the ceiling. There should be an input up too, yeah. Workshop meeting for April 6, 2015. The notice requirements have been provided for in the Open Public Meetings Act and satisfied. Notice that this meeting was properly given by transmission to the Star Ledger, the Independent, and the two other times, and by posting at the Belltown Township Municipal Building and filing with the Township Clerk while on January 9, 2015. Committeeman Fury? Here. And Committeeman Scharfenberger? Here. Committeeman Zanabrino? Here. Deputy Mayor Massell. Here. Mayor Murray. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Take a moment. Uh, Silence to honor the troops serving worldwide, defending our freedoms, constitutions, and way of life. Thank you. <clears throat> the first item on the agenda under known action items, uh, we have a public hearing for Ordinance 2015-3133 and Ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a cap bank. Would anyone from the public like to address action item 312015 Seeing no one from the public. And adopt. Second. Uh, Committeeman Fiore? Yes. Committeeman Scharkenberger? Yes. Committeeman Santabrino? Yes. Deputy Mayor himself. Yes. The next item on the agenda is public hearing on Ordinance 2015-3134, an ordinance amending Chapter 127-23I of the Code of the Township of Middletown, governing fees for the Registrar of Vital Statistics. Would anyone from the public like to speak to action item 2015-3134? Seeing no one from the public, I move to uh, close public hearing. I'm going to adopt it. Second. Committeeman Fiore? Yes. Committeeman Scharfenberger? Yes. Committeeman Senebrino? Yes. Deputy Mayor Massell? Yes. Motion moves to adopt Ordinance 2015-3134. Next on the agenda is introduction of Ordinance 2015-3135, refunding bond ordinance providing for the refunding of certain general obligation bonds of the Township of 
Middletown, New Jersey, appropriating $3,200,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $3,200,000 bonds or notes of the township for financing the cost thereof. We have a motion to introduce this ordinance. So moved. Second. Committeeman Fury? Yes. <clears throat> Committeeman Scharfenberger? Yes. Committeeman Sedembrino? Yes. Deputy Mayor Nassau? Yes. Item 2015-3136, uh, this ordinance for introduction um, will be held. Uh, there will be no action on it. I believe it will be a discussion matter at the end of the meeting. Uh, next on the agenda, um, we have a resolution for authorizing the payment of bills for April 6, 2015. May I have a motion to adopt this resolution? So moved. Second. Committeeman Fiore? Yes. Committeeman Scharfenberger? Yes. Committeeman Santagrino? Yes. Deputy Mayor Massell? Yes. Um, I think we have one item um, on the resolutions of the temporary emergency appropriation, which requires a separate vote. Um, so if you would like to move for resolution 15136. Temporary emergency appropriations for approval. So, sorry. Second. Yes. <clears throat> Fiore? Yes. Committeeman Scharfenberger? Yes. Committeeman Sedabrino? Yes. Deputy Mayor Missell? Yes. We have a consent agenda which will include resolutions 15 133. Through 15 135 and resolutions 15 137 through 15 143. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Committee Man Fiore? Yes. Committee Man Scharfenberger? Yes. Committee Man Sedembrino? Yes. Deputy Mayor Massell? Yes. The um, resolution number 15144, which was a person to person transfer of liquor license, has been held. There was a little uh, hold up on the license, so that'll be added. Next on the agenda, uh, we are moving on to the April 20th uh, work of uh, regular meeting. We have quite a few uh, certificates of appreciation and proclamations. Um, item A is the administration of an oath of office to Patrolman Ryan McGuire. There's a high school South Eagles girls, girls basketball team winning the NJSA Public Basketball Championship. A presentation to the Red Bank Fire Department in appreciation of mutual aid coverage. A proclamation designating police suite. A proclamation designating municipal clerk suite. A proclamation for older Americans week. A National Day of Prayer, a Buddy Poppy Month, and then uh, turning the town pink uh, in support of um, breast cancer. <clears throat> and then we move on to uh, the consent, excuse me, consent, the discussion for April 6th. Uh, at this point, we have uh, three items. The first item A is the fiscal year 2014 EM. AA grant resolution. <clears throat> this is um, just a resolution we do every year. It gets us a, a grant from our uh, OE, sets off some of our OEM salaries. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the item for discussion item B is the hazard mitigation plan adoption <coughs> by jurisdictional. Yes, and this is the county's uh, hazard mitigation program that they were required to do. Uh, post sanity, um, it brings in all the municipalities in the county. Uh, and we're we're a part of, and we've, we've been part of the process of preparing the hazard mitigation plan. Charlie Rogers has been very involved in that through the county, um, and um, we'll we'll um, have that on the next agenda and actually take an action to adopt the, the plan. This is something every county in the state has had to do. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so it, it's it's tied to getting funding in the future and things mm -hmm. like that. Can we also? Not necessarily related, but somewhat related. Can we at some point during the year get a report? 
report from the building department. We're coming up now on year three after Sandy. Year four is when the federal compliance is mandated with ICC and, and the mm -hmm. community rating system. I would like, and I'm sure the committee would like, a report to see where we are in compliance mm -hmm. with respect to the rebuild in terms of complete compliance because if you, I remember all too well, towns that weren't in compliance in Alabama and other places were kind of sued by the federal government for private property owners' actions. And I'd like to avoid that. <laughs> yeah, there's the, the, the other reason that's important to stay on top of that is that um, you know, once that four-year period goes by, uh, the houses that were required to have been elevated that haven't been elevated, right. it starts to impact your community rating Correct. system points. Mm -hmm. The community rating system is what gets us our discounts for our residents who are in flood hazard areas. They get a discount on their insurance. We have a, a very high rating, actually, one of the, one of the highest around. I think it's only, no one in New Jersey, I think, has a higher rating than us. But um, uh, you, you start to lose some points if you have homes that are occupied and not complied with. But th these are what, what Mr. Fury is talking about is homes that were substantially damaged, but the people repaired them and moved back in without elevating them. They didn't have to elevate them right away. Some people chose to do it right away. Some people just chose to do the repairs they had to do to get back in their house. But they had a four-year window within which to elevate their house. Um, if they don't do that, th at some point it could start to affect our, our points. It could actually start to affect everybody's insurance rates. That does comply. Yeah. It does, yeah. So, I'll get that. It's probably best as we get closer to that time. Right. Before we get to the police ordinance, we're going to talk about it. I did point out one thing that came up very late today, and if you just pass these around. But and I'm, unfortunately, the copy came out kind of dark. But but there's been some discussion about certain, some certain intersections in North Middletown, and you can barely see those little three three circles. But mm -hmm. to describe them, it's Ocean Avenue and Bayside Parkway, Hudson and Bayside Parkway, and um, Hudson and Seabreeze. There are no stop signs at those intersections. Um, there should be. And but in order to make them effective, we actually have to pass an ordinance. So I just wanted to, we're going to have an ordinance introduction at the next meeting to actually establish them as legal stops. Um, and uh, safety council has been kind of pushing this. Yeah. Um, and actually the Ideal Beach Association has brought this up in the past. That they really, it's hard to believe actually, that especially Seabreeze and Hudson doesn't actually have stop yeah, signs. No, and and ironically, the, the, the thing about that stop, that, that intersection is that somehow Seabreeze is considered the through movement, which doesn't make any sense uh, in that location. But anyway, we'll, we'll have an ordinance establishing each of those legal stop signs. Um, and then the last item, and, uh, Chief is here to, I uh, just want him to summarize, but at the next meeting we'll be introducing an ordinance to effectuate the changes to the um, structure of the police department. So I'm just summarize what that's going to do. Yes. Uh, we are organizing the uh, Hitler's organization has given an opportunity to restructure it to be more effective uh, from a management perspective um, with the number of lieutenants and sergeants, increase our supervision and accountability. Um, I think it would be a much more efficient way of operating out of the plan. Uh, it will also incorporate uh, the use of special officers, which we had a number of years ago, have been discontinued. That would uh, be a great help in seizing employment uh, when some of us have been well. Is that something that we have to approve? Or you? Yes, I mean, I need to be appointed by uh, resolution, special okay. one, special two officers, and we haven't done it in months, at least 15 or 20 years. So yeah, one of the things we talked about, one of the things we put in the budget, <coughs> is a line for special officers. <coughs> and the reason we did that was that we, we noted over the past several years that one of the areas we really lack supervision is in our parks and our beaches. Mm -hmm. Now that the beach is becoming much more popular, um, uh, much more heavily used. Uh, the dunes have just been rebuilt and revegetated. I've already had some little bit of vandalism has occurred. Um, we, we really need people to monitor them. And the special officers would give us the ability to have the, the beaches and the dunes and the parks throughout the towns re regularly uh, patrol. Uh, we have vandalism issues at a number of parks. Hopefully we can, you know, it, maybe not catch people, but prevent it from happening if there's more yeah. visibility. Uh, we've had a lot of complaints in parks about dogs running loose. It's a big issue. We get every every spring and summer, people just letting their dogs run loose. Another they go after other people's dogs or on leases, and it's a big issue. <coughs> and 
um, it's hard to control, but if you have, we, we can't expect our police officers to be you know, sitting in parks for uh, lengths of time. So we're going to have special officers who, who have the ability to you know, report those things and enforce some of those things. Mm -hmm. At any given uh, summer weekend, we were Sandy Hook reaches capacity closes, we get a lot of the overflow in our public beaches. Mm -hmm. and it's not fair to take the officers away from our side duties for the shift to, to deal with that. So that gives another um, option. One of the things that I think we might want to talk about, the, one of the benefits we see of restructuring is saving some overtime expenses. With the supervision, yes. Uh, when I was initially appointed to the department in 93, we had the two sergeants <coughs> and the future patrol squad. Uh, we've gotten away from that. Some have two, some have one. Um, we always report to supervisors to be on duty at any given time with each squad. We only have two scheduled. Uh, obviously, they have training days. They have uh, regular time that they need to take off. It naturally closes it off over time. So by building in a second uh, sergeant on each shift, because three supervisors would be much more efficient uh, to operate the department. We're already seeing over time and uh, under a lot better control lately. Um, we've done some major changes to really improve the overtime with dispatchers, which was be getting out of hand. Um, so we're trying to put things into place that will <coughs> prevent overtime in the future. <coughs> so that ordinance will be introduced on the 20th. And, and uh, I'd ask Brian, when I spoke to him about it, that if we introduce it on the 20th, I'd like to adopt it at our workshop meeting. So one of the things you talked about the stop sign, just to take a half a step back, but um, I saw an email recently, and I don't know, Chief, you might be able to comment if you're getting direct uh, correspondence in the police department, but with respect to you know, the bus stop areas where we have parking, or municipal parking rides, or where the bus stops for, you know, say, Academy bus stops for New York, are we getting, I saw one or two complaints, but are we getting, or are you getting complaints with respect to the neighborhood of people Parking on the streets versus the municipal lots, or if not, it it just recently, um, one that comes to mind a number of years back, and it was uh, quite a few years ago, was in the area of Appleton Avenue. Right, that's what I've seen. Yeah, that one's uh, coming up again because it's getting a little bit more crowded now. That's, that's, what, that's what I've seen. So. I mean, there is there, there are other ordinances and statutes uh, with respect to parking too close to an intersection, a certain distance of a stop sign or other traffic control measures that we can take to enforce that. Um, but I'll also we'll take a look at it as more recent Yeah, I mean, we've debated that over the years. I mean, the issue is if you if you put a parking restriction, as we have in some neighborhoods there, people just might move another block away. So you just move the problem down the road. Um, but that's, it's a you know, we might try it at least to see if it, if it works. Because the, the people got used to parking in the Appleton lot when we had one there right? before there was a right. before there was a Wawa there near the parking lot. Um, they don't want to drive down to Belford. Um, but it, it, well actually Port Monmouth. In Port Monmouth um, at the Gems lot there's actually at least fifteen to twenty spaces empty there every day. So there is room for parking. Um, they just don't want to drive down. And actually it's not a problem ironically we had some complete people complaining about uh, when we closed the one at Palmer Avenue. By by, by um, jocks, and we said, well, go just go park in Port Monmouth lot, and they were willing to accept. Actually, you increase your fare slightly uh, by going in that direction. But when you go when you go you know towards um, the city, you actually might lower your fare. Hang on, let me stop you. I think we should consider an ordinance there because it is there's, you there's just building no no eight a.m. to yeah. 6 p.m. Or just do a four hour parking limit. Go out with them some places. Yeah, but tell you what, I think Violet Avenue is one of the streets in particular. Yeah. Uh, well, right. Between Appleton Avenue and Thompson. And most of the homes there, I believe, have driveways, but they probably have some folks on the street parking with the residents as well. So uh, I'll take a look at it. So I'll be uh, up for discussion. Mr. Sembrini, are you still with us? I'm still here. Do you have any comments? I don't uh, tonight, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. I'm good. No, uh, I'll sit for the regular meeting. Thanks. I'm furious. I will uh, also save my comments for the regular meeting. Uh, and I'll just say one comment. 
quickly, just a reminder, this is um, Autism Awareness Month. Um, I just want to point that out again and bring it up again at regular meetings. Um, one in 45 children in New Jersey are being diagnosed with autism, and uh, it's something that we have to put in the front and center. That's all I have tonight. Yes, Town Hall, yep, is lit up blue. Exactly, thank you. Nice All right, Golden Sun. All right, Golden Sun. Great. Public comments. Public comments. Public comments, would anyone from the public like to speak? Yes. Hi, my name's Don Watson, living at 1 Collinson Drive in the Monmouth. Um, I was wondering on Ordinance 2015-3135, um, when was that going to be up for a public hearing? At the next regular meeting, scheduled for the next regular this, meeting. Later this month. April 20th. April 20th. 20th. Very good, thank you. Um, and I noticed that um, the Township Committee bought new chairs. Do you know how many chairs we purchased? Which chairs? The ones in the bill list. It's like one of the first items in the bill list. So we bought some chairs and an end table. and. There were some chairs bought from the mayor's office. For Staples? From Staples? Yeah. This, how many chairs was that? Uh, I think it was two? Three. Three, three. three chairs and a table. Yes. I think that should do it for tonight. Thank you very time. Okay. Anyone else from the public that can speak?